Prepare yourselves because starting on November 6th, Dice Check hosts the Dice Check Tournament Arc 2. Last year, we pitted each member of the channel against one another in a slugfest tournament to see which player and army is the best. It was a long and painful battle, ending in a draw with Orcs and Space Wolves. But now, with more 9th edition codexes released, the tournament is back and better than ever. This time, the tournament will consist of 8 unique players, all piloting 8 unique armies in a single elimination knockout event leading up to the final table with every game being streamed live at twitch.tv forward slash dice check and the VOD fully uploaded to the channel the day after. Each game will be streamed live every single Saturday starting at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and will continue all the way up to December 18th for over an entire month of live tournament content, complete with live game commentary and post-game interviews. Just like the last event, there will be live casting, but this time we've upped the ante by also introducing subscriber showcases to talk with some of you watching the streams and talking about your own journey into the hobby, showcasing your armies and hard work. We've put a lot of thought into this event, and so we are extremely excited to bring you the second tournament arc. Each game will be using player-optimized terrain, or POT, to set up each table. Each player will be given terrain and it's up to them to decide how they want to place it onto the map to build their own deployment zone to give more flexibility to the players. Ruins will be area terrain tagged with the following keywords, scalable, breachable, light cover, defensible, and obscuring. Woods will be area terrain tagged with the following keywords, defensible, breachable, difficult ground, dense cover, obscuring, and light cover. Crates will be obstacle terrain, meaning you'll gain its benefits when within 3 inches of the building, tagged with the following keywords, exposed position, light cover, and scalable. Players will roll off to see who gets to place down their piece of terrain first, and then alternate until all pieces of terrain have been placed onto the board. All terrain pieces must be at least 4 inches away from the table edge or another piece of terrain, and ruins must be placed more than 6 inches away from other ruins. This gives armies a chance to defend themselves against high damage shooting and build their ideal scenario when going up against their opponent. Round 1 will consist of sweep and clear and battle lines missions, with battle lines having a center piece of terrain the players cannot interfere or move. These are also missions with amazing secondaries that both 8th edition and 9th edition armies can choose from. Round 2 will consist of overrun and priority targets, with overrun having a center piece of terrain that players cannot interfere with and hosting the strongest mission secondary and priority targets. With Overrun being a whole 2 mission to score 5 points in your primaries, it's going to make these round 2 games an absolute bloodbath. And the final round will be played on the Scouring, the most brutal mission in the chapter approved book, and one where players will have a hard time scoring on as it's both a whole 2 mission and its mission secondary is one of the hardest ones to complete. For this event, each player was allowed one army to play during the event and it is jam-packed with strong contenders to take the title. Our first entry are the Drakari, being ran by Demeki. In the first tournament arc, Demeki's run landed him in 4th place overall running Death Guard and Dark Angels. However, this time he's flipped the script and decided to bring in the army he's been running at tournaments with his Drakari running 9 Kronos. This list is an absolute powerhouse of hard to shift units in an army made up of T3 chaff. With Kronos still being able to use Dark Technomancer on their flamers, this list is extremely volatile and is marked as the fifth favored army to win so far at the tournament. Next up, we've got the Tau Empire being ran by newcomer Dick as he tries to bring the firepower during this event with a huge blob of Crisis bodyguards ready to mow down any unit with drop zone clear. As a newcomer to the office, Dick definitely has a chance here to be a dark horse at this event and being a veteran player of the game, he's gonna have to pull out all the stops to reach the final bracket with an army favorite as finishing 
finishing last at the event. With our first Imperium entry, we've got John P's Adeptus Mechanicus. Although not having a great showing on the channel thus far, John P has been slowly getting better and better at running his ad mech and now feels comfortable enough to bring them to an event. Returning to defend his title for first place, he's got a lot to chew through in order to get to the top table. With 20 Rust Stalkers, 2 Admech Flyers, and your Ballastaris, this list is an all-rounder to answer against both melee and long-range threats, with the crowd voting it as the 4th place army to win the entire tournament. Next up, you wanted him, and you got him. Making their appearance at their first event, we've got the crowd favorite Necrons coming to the tournament being piloted by one of the editors of the channel, Skater. Running a Novak army, he's going for some Necron melee prowess to try and take down the big bads of this event. With incredibly beefy Scorpec destroyers and annoying Lich Guard, these Necrons are going to blender whatever they come into combat with while still being durable enough to withstand some of the firepower from the armies at the event. To top it all off, he's bringing the Void Dragon. What's he going to do with it? We don't know, but it'll be a great meme regardless as this army sits as an army people place as their third favorite to take the event. Making a run back from the last tournament where he finished second overall is Bricky bringing along his Astra Militarum with not just one, but two full payload mana cores. Looking through the Octarius book, Bricky decided not to opt for any of the updates and is instead sticking to old reliable with Tempestus Scions and a Valkyrie to drop them off while also taking none other than Gaunt's Ghost to back up his army. This is the seventh favorite army to finish at the top table. New player and host of the Dice Check Livestream's Wrath comes in bringing the Black Templars with their new codex. Bringing 15 Vanguard Vets, some Blade Guard Vets, and hyped up HQ units, it's going to be interesting to see how Raph plays out this new army and what tools he has in mind for his upcoming matches. Ranking number 5 as the most favored army to win, the Black Templars are a dark horse to reach the top tables. Next up, returning again from his third place finish at the last tournament, we've got Matt. This time running his first 9th edition army with Grey Knights packed to the brim with 3 Dread Knights and a large amount of Interceptors backed up by Drago and even some Purifiers. With only one Psyker at this tournament, Matt's going to have a field day throwing out every power he could want while still dishing out high quality shots and a deadly amount of melee prowess. He's gonna have to buckle down in this tournament, scoring the second highest favored army to win the event. And finally, rounding out the dice check tournament, with the number one favorite army to win the tournament, we've got returning champion Mark running the orcs with a brutal free Buddha's list. With two planes, squig buggies, and some scrap jets, this list is going to put the hurt on a lot of armies in this event and run amok during his games. Through popular demand, he's toned down the list a bit following the events from SoCal. However, it's still a very powerful list that can reach top table and put the WOG at full display. Eight armies, seven matches, filled to the brim with players that understand their opponent's playstyle, commentary, laughs, and exceptionally low rolls. Who will take the event and be crowned the winner of the Dice Check Tournament Arc 2? Will John P. and Mark make a run to reclaim their titles? Will Demeki inevitably roll constant 5-up feel-no-pains or casual 9-inch charges? Will Skater dethrone the players at Dice Check and will Tal be able to pick up a good run during the tournament? It all starts on Saturday, November 6 at twitch.tv forward slash dice check and continuing on for every Saturday up until December 18th. Find out who will win and who will lose at the Dice Check Tournament Arc 2.